The uniquely titled Batman and Red Robin begins with the introduction of Carrie Kelly to the new DCU. Maintaining her in-your-face attitude from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Rises, she appears at Wayne Manor with a set of DVDs and a bill for Damien. Surprised by Damien's secret association with Carrie, Bruce tracks her down but quickly leaves when he's overwhelmed by his grief. With Carrie's questions about Damien's whereabouts ringing in his head, Bruce retreats from Gotham claiming he needs time alone. Knowing Bruce all too well, Alfred knows something is up. Because in reality, Batman has been constructing a secret lab in the Arctic where he hopes to resurrect his son. He kidnaps a shade agent Frankenstein to learn more about the life force that powers him and hopes to use a modified version of it to bring Damien back. Despite Frankenstein's warnings of dooming Damien to a cursed life, Batman continues with his plan and begins dissecting his captive. But before he's truly able to learn anything, he's interrupted by Red Robin, whom Alfred has sent to check up on Bruce. After a tense discussion touching on the recent trust issues disseminated by the Joker among the Bat family, Bruce refuses to listen to Tim's words of reason. With no other choice, Red Robin brings the whole lab crashing down and a sullen Batman wordlessly leaves. The issue ends with Carrie proudly telling her friend that Bruce Wayne has more than settled Damien's bill. With Bruce's plan foiled, perhaps Carrie will be the one to help Bruce find some peace. So the big thing in this issue is Carrie Kelly is now part of the DC Universe. <laughs> Great news, right? One of my favorite Robins is finally in the uh, continuity. Well, they're not. doesn't seem like they're setting her up to be a Robin. She's going to be more, I think, of a supporting character. Yeah, I think this issue was really just a tease, trying to sell... Cell issues. Yeah, it's just like, hey, Carrie Kelly's here, guys. Obviously, Carrie Kelly is originally created by Frank Miller in The Dark Knight Returns, and there she's, I guess, a teenager, and she gets to be the new Robin. And do you think she's got a chance of getting a close relationship with Bruce at all? I think there's definitely the possibility that she will grow closer to Bruce, uh, but I don't think she'll be the next Robin, at least not in the near future, maybe in the much further out future. So what I can infer from this issue is it seems like she was teaching Damien acting or something like that, and Bruce obviously didn't know about it. And I was thinking that maybe the inclusion of her will mean that she directed some sort of movie and Damien was in it, and that way Bruce will have like a little memento of Damien to hold on to. You know, He'll be immortalized in film, That'd which is a little cool. corny, but... Uh, It'd be pretty cool, and she even calls him like a natural, and... Maybe they were like looking for money in the beginning when they're having this party. But in the end, Bruce gives them all this money, so maybe that's some place to start. In the last issue of Batman and Robin, number 18, which had no dialogue in it, only actions, we saw a little note that exactly. Bruce had with a list of movies, and on the bottom it said CK. So that was obviously Carrie Kelly. I thought it was actually Clark Kent. In this very issue, you see another note from her, and she also signs it CK. I mean, in hindsight, it's obviously Carrie Kelly. The bulk of this issue was actually not devoted to Carrie Kelly, it was devoted to Bruce's plan to get Damien back, and surprisingly what he jumps to is Frankenstein to get Damien back. That actually really surprised me uh, for a couple reasons. First, I don't think Bruce is the type of guy who would use supernatural powers to get his son back, no matter how much it hurt. And if you are going to go to supernatural powers, it seems like the Lazarus Pit is the most obvious uh <laughs> choice to go to and why wouldn't he go with that maybe it's too obvious maybe that's just it for a writer it's like eh, we've seen lazarus but so much why why do that let's go to frankenstein and he does try to go through a very scientific method of trying to like isolate frankenstein's life force how he's doing it but i, I think even out of all the magic revival techniques out there frankenstein was one of the odder ones to potentially choose like he could go as Zatanna, and she's part of Justice League Dark, so I'm sure they have, like, some expertise in that. Why not go find, like, Green Lantern, find a White Lantern <laughs> ring or something like that. Hal Jordan's basically the Black Lantern now, so if you want dead zombies, that's, <laughs> that's your go-to guy. We know right now that the way they're taking Batman and Robin is that they're going to just have another Robin sort of guest starring. And maybe in the next few issues, there should be more of these crazy plans for Batman. <laughs> Trying to bring back Damien. Yeah. Frankenstein does bring up a really good point where he says, you're, if you bring Damien back, he's not going to be living or dead. You're just going to bring back kind of like an abomination. And I think whatever Batman does, if he does do any new other plan, I don't think it's actually going to be Damien. And I think he's eventually going to realize that. That ties in a lot with Frankenstein's overarching theme where even he himself feels like he shouldn't be alive, that he is a, he's cursed to forever you know, walk the earth and battle monsters instead of being finally laid to rest. So I don't think he would want 
Damien to have to suffer that same fate. He even says in this issue, I let you capture me so you could see that this isn't natural, that this isn't right. One cool thing about the Frankenstein scene was the two-page layout of Bruce cutting open Frankenstein while Tim is coming uh, to the North Pole. And what I liked about it was just the, the panels. They were so close together, and they had the stitching holding them together. Very fitting. So it was a great for Batman and Robin, or as is in this issue, Batman and Red Robin number 19. What would you give it as a grade? I'm going to give this issue a 3 out of 5. I thought the whole Frankenstein storyline was pretty dumb. I don't think Bruce Wayne would ever do that. Uh, but Carrie Kelly did pique my interest, and I'm interested to see where she goes in the future. I'd give this issue a 3.5 out of 5. It was a pretty blatant teaser with Carrie Kelly there. But being a Carrie Kelly fan, I'm really excited that she's in the DCU. All right. So thanks for watching B3 Comics Review of Batman and Robin number 19. Before we go, we got a question for you guys. What plan to bring Damien back outside of Lazarus Pits could Batman use? Leave your answer below in the comments, and thanks for watching.